we are at the start of a three-part series on ductile failure and how it applies to concrete. My name is Dr. John Belkowitz. I am the Director of R&D at Intelligent Concrete and we're going to start our series off with talking about uh, steel coupons or dowels that go through failure. And normally when we test steel in tension, we create these little dowels. They're about this big with two little thread sets on the end. We put it in a closed loop hydraulic press, then it exert an opposite direction uniaxial load or a tensile load to it, and that tensile load jumps down to the material. And it's steel that we're talking about, or aluminum or other materials, but today we're focusing on steel. And what ends up happening is the load that's hit at the two top ends of the material transfers into the thinner portion. And as that material goes through some load, it starts going through a failure scenario. The first piece of that failure scenario is called necking. When the material stretches out and the cross-sectional area from the original A1 draws down to a smaller cross-sectional area, A2. Now what happens in that process, we cannot forget that our pressure equation equals load over cross-sectional area. So the load at time one for area one where we have our original larger cross-sectional area with a constant tensile force means that we have a certain load, this T over area one. As that cross-sectional area becomes smaller because of necking, because that cross-sectional area is in the bottom in the denominator, that's gonna drive our pressure or, or our, our stress up. So our T over A as we go from 1 to 2, 2 is going to be much larger than 1 and ultimately lead to that final failure. But we are talking about steel. Steel is not a ceramic like material and it doesn't go through a catastrophic failure scenario like a more ceramic like material. So when we look at this failed specimen, after it's gone through this necking, it ends up cracking and then popping, we see these three states within our failed specimen. The first one, we have this fatigue crack where the localized stresses, our sigma local, is equal to our sigma applied plus another sigma applied times the area ahead of our crack over the radius of our crack times two square rooted. So we're adding a certain portion so that the localized stress that is tearing open this crack is greater than the applied stress. And that eventually breaks apart this cross-sectional area to a point where we go from this tearing failure to this fast fracture that it is a more like a catastrophic failure that tears apart our steel as it gets closer from that elastic to that plastic zone. And that's that ductile te uh, failure that we want to see in concrete to help us get running room. That's why we use steel in concrete reinforcement to actually give us some running room so that we can see the structure failing and get off of it before we have a final or ultimate failure. So thanks for joining us today in part one of this awesome video on ductile failure. We're going to get more into the science of it. What we wanted to do here is just show you holistically how we measure that ductile failure in metals. And now we're going to look at it at a much smaller scale. Stay tuned! Go concrete, beat asphalt!